That's right. I was. Um, um, I had been in the army for nearly 19 years, and I was coming to the end, end of my engagement um, uh, last September. And um, I was thinking whether to carry on in the army for a few more years. And then I had a phone call from the deputy chaplain of the, of the Navy and asking whether I would be willing to take up an assignment in Gibraltar, um, seeing that you know, they were having difficulties with uh, getting another chaplain. So I said, let me think about it. <laughs> so the following day I phoned and said, well, if, we, if it's okay, I, you know, I'll take up the, uh, the role as, uh, as the, the chaplain in Gibraltar. The only thing is I would need to change to the Navy because this is a naval, it's been a naval uh, chaplain. Well, I see that you're wearing the white garb. What does the army have to say about your turning coat to the Navy? I know some people we call, call me a betrayer. <laughs> but like I say to most people, you know, as a chaplain, you're here for all people, irrespective of, of faith, of, of religion, irrespective of what service you belong to, because we are chaplains first and foremost. So we're looking after our, uh, all our people. When, when we think of um, the army, we think of a very tight-knit group of people. People in the army become very, very close. As a chaplain, do you feel part of the army and navy in the same way as a soldier would? Very much so. I think one of the lovely things, I was talking to a few friends the other day about my time in, in, in the forces as a chaplain, it's the amount of camaraderie and friendship you experience, sometimes even more than you might do in your local community. And, um, and you maintain those close links because um, unlike being, as before, being a parish priest where you do your normal um, um, celebrations, uh, worship, um, visit hospitals, here actually you're actually living with the people and experiencing the same things that they do. So I'm around in their workshops. So you get to know people and they get to know you. You go with them on ops. You have to sleep under, in a tent, you know, in the middle of Kenya, you know. So you actually live in their discomforts and sharing their, in their very life. So they really appreciate that you are with them. And, and, and I think that's important as a chaplain, that you share in their life, in their fears, in their joys and in their hopes. You mentioned Kenya, of course, places of conflict with the, the army and the navy. How trained are you? Well, we do uh, do a bit of training beforehand. Um, we don't carry any weapons, as you know. And I've had a few, um, I've been on a few ops. And um, uh, they can be tough going, of course, especially when you, when you lose people you've known. But at the same time, you build that relationship with them. And um, it's an amazing um, uh, bond that you, you make, you forge with, 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 us, with, with the, the person that you're with. And, um, and you're there in, in times of conflict to bring a bit of hope, hopefully, and a bit of um, um, sense of humanity in a very human world, because you can lose your sense of humanity. And I think the chaplain is very important, you know, uh, to be there among them and bringing them hope and helping them to continue in that sense of, of their human, humanness, which we could easily lose. When you go back to when you first decided to, to join the army, what do you think now in, in retrospect of that decision that you took? I think it's an amazing, I mean, where I've been, the experience I've had, I would never have thought of that. I remember before I left Gibraltar, if I had to go to Algeciras, I would always ask a friend whether he would come with me because I dislike going on my own anywhere. And then having joined the army and uh, I'm going to places I would never thought I would have gone and experienced the things I would never thought I would experience. I mean, it really made me the person that I am and the priest I'm, I'm today from all those experiences. It's been an enriching experience and it's a journey of faith, a journey of life, which is, has been so important for me. I remember when I first um, arrived in Germany in January 2000 and was walking down the main road and I was saying, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Why am I here? You know, and, um, you know, and then I realized, well, I am a chaplain, and I've never looked back ever since. It's been a tremendous journey for me, and I'm happy that, even though I'm in, in a different way, I am continuing that ministry within uh, the Naval Chaplaincy. But as I say, nowadays we do look after all the, the tri-service, especially in Jib, it's very much tri-service. An officer, a chaplain, and a gentleman. Well, <laughs> you, you, did, you did Sanders as well. Well, yes, of course, at the beginning. I mean, it's, it's very different now. If I had to go to Sanders now, I don't think it would have passed. It's very different. We, we had to do four weeks of, uh, they used to call it, or they call it the Vickers and Tots <laughs> course. And it's four weeks really getting yourself into a military um, uh, frame of mind, understanding that military side. So that was at the beginning of my, when I, when I first joined. I suppose that you were the vicar. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Father, back on the rock, so what does the assignment actually consist of? 
Well, um, it's changed a, a bit, the, the whole sense of chaplaincy. Before, uh, the chaplain was based here in King's Chapel. And, um, but now we've, you know, we are here as an old souls ministry. So my office, I'm mainly based down at Devil's Tower Camp and also in Four Corners where we have our two main areas where our military are. So normally you'll find me down in Devil's Tower Camp or Four Corners. And occasionally I do have to come here because I'm like the, the custodian of this church. I came to a very sweet Mass on a Saturday evening. Strange to think that Catholic Mass here at the King's Chapel, we normally tend to associate chaplaincy with Anglican. Well, I mean, no, the, the chaplaincy, it's all, they're, they're all old faith, you know, there are all sorts of chaplains. Yes, in the, in the past, this has been more, it is a foundationally uh, an Anglican church, but nowadays we, um, um, we do have tri service churches, so we have a, for all denominations. In fact, before I came to Jib, I was based with the army in Northern Ireland, and we shared a church, it was a shared church. We did have a little chapel with the, the Blessed Sacrament Chapel for us, where, where we kept the Blessed Sacrament. But it was a church, church, church that we all shared. So I, I had my mass at nine o'clock in the morning, and then my Anglican colleague had his, his service at 11 o'clock. So you know, we, we don't associate, or, you know, just a building with the chaplaincy. So there are the services here, there's uh, Church of England service, right. Anglican yeah, service yeah. on Sundays. On Sundays we do have, I mean, we continue that, and we're lucky that the, the dean, the active dean, he does a service here on a Sunday at 10 o'clock for the Anglicans. And I've started, primarily because of my own spirituality, I need to go to Mass or celebrate Mass. I've started an unofficial Mass on a Saturday evenings at 6 o'clock really mainly trying to hear also for, for our military families and friends. Father, what are your plans now that you're back home? What do you hope to achieve? Well, I suppose consolidate uh, the chaplaincy, military chaplaincy in, in, in Jib and, um, and, and offer my, my services and support to, 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 to our families who are coming back from the UK. Um, it's a home for me. Uh, but um, having been on the other side, I, I know what it is having to move every two or three years, come into a pray, place you don't really know very well. So it's very important that you share and you support um, our families, our military families, who, and, and those who are working for, for, um, for, 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 for MOD Gibraltar to support them with pastoral, uh, well, uh, pastoral support. So it is very important of, of journeying with people and being there and celebrating with them their faith or just walking with them and journeying with them the journey of life and trying to help them to make sense of life as we all do wherever we are.